All right, uh, 416 the time. Mary uh, called saying that she agreed with a previous female caller saying that uh, she wouldn't vote for a female president. She said her eyes had been opened. And my question to Mary, and she agreed to hang on. Thank you very much, Mary. What opened your eyes? Well, nothing that happened in my life personally. I, I didn't mean that. But, um, well, the one thing is when, when all of these women started coming out that they had been um, uh, sexually harassed or whatever term they used for that years and years and years ago, well, first of all, if I thought that that was important to them, they would have come forward at that time. And then uh, seeing the way that Hillary behaved and, um, you know, um, the, the Nancy Pelosi, the, seeing the way that she I think that women uh, play that that gender card, if you will, far more than I realized they would, and they seem to go by emotions more than uh, more than laws and facts. And it is just uh, it has just disgusted me to see that kind of behavior. And I, I so I just uh, I think long and hard before I would. Um, before I would vote for a woman and put her in any kind of um, uh, power, and and I would have to make sure that I thought, you know, that that she wouldn't, uh, you know, legislate like that or, or make decisions like so that. So would it be fair to say, and if not, please tell me, uh, the way you feel this uh, this newfound political mindset, if you will, um, is it a backlash of sorts against the hashtag Me Too? sexual harassment movement, and that's what it was, uh, mm-hmm. that, uh, that uh, washed over the country, would it be fair to say it's, it's somewhat of a backlash? It is somewhat of a backlash um, from that. And not that's not one hundred percent what I what I base you know uh, my decisions on now. But that but I would say that that probably played you know thirty five percent. The other thirty five percent is you know I wouldn't have voted for Hillary anyway. But but just to just the way. You, that she, that the unfair, you know, part of it. I, I mean, you know, I, I think it, it's bigger than that. The world is not about fair and unfair. The, the world is about, uh, you know, the Constitution, our rights, and uh, and the laws. And I think they should be upheld. And um, and I, I'm just not sure that from what I from what I take from from the female candidates and female actions of, of people now, I, I've, I've lost a little confidence in that. I think they play that female card too often, and I don't I I, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, Mary, very uh, very interesting call, very informative too. I appreciate it very very much. And I appreciate you hanging on through the break there. Thank you very much, Mary. Good call. Uh, Maria, Maria in Euless. Maria, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Maria? I'm doing fine. Thank you for taking my call. Rick. You bet. Um, I think that Sanders is going to have some trouble because he kind of showed him his substance when he endorsed Hillary. And I think a lot of them defected over and voted for Trump. And they were kind of angry with that. And I think he's going to have a hard time getting those people back because of the fact that he showed them what he was made of under pressure. And then I think the land scandal with his wife is going to come up because it was one of Trump's people that pointed that out to the FBI. And that's still under probe and they can use that against him possibly if he runs. And I know they were afraid of that, that they weren't so afraid of the 2016, but they are afraid of the 2020 that it could be thrown out there. And to the people that don't believe in women, I think I'm a big advocate for if Donald Trump doesn't run in 2020, I think Janine Pirro, Judge Janine Pirro, would be so <laughs> wonderful because she holds herself so well, and she's the type of person that wouldn't expect any dumbing down, and she's the type that respects men. She's not a big feminist. She's just the type that has earned what she's done in her life. And I think she would, I mean, she would, if you watched her show and her opening statements, she would take on Obama, she would take on Michelle Obama, and she just lays it out there like Donald Trump, but in an eloquent way. But she is a very strong woman, who, and she who, would make a wonderful president. Uh, Maria, who did you vote for this last time around, if you don't Trump. mind saying Trump? Um, mm-hmm. If it came up, uh, I'm not dismissing Judge 
uh, Jeanine Pirro. But if it came up between uh, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, um, how much of a horse race do you think that would be? I don't. I think Donald Trump is a person that um, has been used to being able to take anybody on. And I think he's going to be okay. And I think with uh, the accomplishments, because he still has several years to go. So unless he really screws up, I think he should be okay. But uh, I, I, think, I, think, like I think you're right. You know, the latest move by the Democrats, um, and it's just now coming out, is to forget Donald Trump, but go after his evangelical voters by saying, mm-hmm. uh, how can you be an evangelical um, Christian Protestant uh, how can you do that and vote for a man uh, that doesn't have the morals of an evangelical, doesn't have a personal history of an evangelical? They're trying to shame evangelicals into not backing Trump any longer because they say Trump is the antithesis of what they believe. Yeah, but if they don't, they don't understand their religion, you'll understand that even Jesus consorted with uh, the sinners. He much rather be with the sinners than he was with the um, ones that thought that they were, you know, like the Pharisees. And well, I, you know, I would say to those democratic strategists, may, you might want to open the Bible. Yeah. I'm not saying I read it enough as I should, but when Peter asked Jesus, "Hey, I got this situation with someone. How many times do I have to forgive them? Is seven enough?" And what was Jesus' response? Seventy times seven. And further. Thank you. And further, how many times a day does your father, Heavenly Father, uh, forgive you? Try to do the same thing. Yeah, but even at that, you you know, I usually say when people are saying stuff about people, but who am I? Yeah. I mean, because unless you are without sin, it's like, how can you sit there and, you know, because then you're going to be judged to a higher standard. Exactly. And, you know, sitting there judging. But I do believe that, you know, as long as he keeps on the same path and stuff, and the fact that the Christians know that you know, we've all sinned, but he seems to be a man that's not afraid to recognize God, and that speaks a lot when he's up on the highest platform and held to higher accountability, and he speaks about God and uh, does things in the name of God, and it's just a fact that that's going to stand for a lot. Well, no, you, you're neighbor. absolute, absolutely 100% spot on to those Democratic strategists that are trying to drive a wedge between evangelical voters, and there are a ton of them. Um, and, and Trump, I would, I would say this, you don't, you don't know what you're messing with. Um, you know, as long as he keeps God first, as long as, uh, you know, uh, he repents of whatever, uh, he's done in the past, none of us are to set in judgment of that. That's a much higher calling than politics. So, you know, uh, Democrats had, had the stage for a long, long time. You know, you just didn't, uh. You didn't speak out about what is important to people. And I think that, and that alone, will tell the story. All right. Uh, I gave you uh, the top 15 Democratic presidential candidates for 2020. Emerging from that list, at least by my estimation, and I could be wrong, but um, I believe Bernie Sanders. I mean, look at what the guy's doing. He hadn't slowed down since he lost, uh, uh, lost the campaign. I mean, he's been back and forth, coast to coast, almost continually for a year. Uh, Latest uh, was in Austin uh, for the uh, South by Southwest. And now he's making noise about they can flip. They'll be able to flip if enough enough Democrats get involved. He believes you can flip the state of Texas. Well, you know, I don't know. That's 38 electoral votes. That'd be a a pretty big feather in the Democrats' cap. I I don't see it happening. I think there are still enough people in Texas with common sense. You know, I could be wrong. 425, I don't think I am. 425, the time, your call straight ahead. We'll check uh, Eric Bushman in the WBAP newsroom. Check your afternoon drive and right back with your calls.